Hey everyone, it's theCUBE live at Dell Tech World, day three of our coverage of the 2023 event from Mandalay Bay. Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante here. We have been coming to you since Monday night, all day yesterday. All day today we're here talking about, a lot about innovation, Dave. There's been a ton of talk about innovation. We've got two alumni back with us, Dell and Broadcom. We're going to be talking about the latest gen of the Broadcom 9600 family. Please welcome Kim Lane, our Principal Performance Architect at Broadcom. Great to have you back, Kim. Yeah, thanks for having us. Ms. Jones joins us as well, Director of Server Technical Marketing Engineering at Dell. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us. Of course, happy to be here. Yeah. So let's talk about the latest generation of the Broadcom 9600. Kim, give us kind of the technical lay of the land and all, there's some significant performance numbers that have been achieved. Yeah, and I was actually really proud to be a part of this. Uh, this came about about five or six years ago. I'm part of the architecture team and we decided that we were just going to blow up all the previous norms. We weren't going to do this incremental improvement. We were going to do this big, massive improvement in performance and we really did that. And we did that with a, a couple of different technologies using offload engines. Um, we doubled the memory, we doubled the host bandwidth uh, and using PCIe Gen 4 and 24 gig SAS. So it, it's been really exciting. Seamus, talk a little bit about Dell's involvement there and how you've been a, been a facilitator or an enabler of that. Absolutely, so our partnership with Broadcom has gone on for multiple years, and really the, the, the development of PERC-12 as a generational improvement has made a, a, a dynamic impact on our 16th generation of servers, which we just launched last year. Really the exciting part is that customers' implementations are seeing the benefit from those performance gains that Kim was talking about. And our partnership between the testing and the, the performance gain that we saw in the testing meant that uh, we're able to deploy that in all sorts of different use cases. So when, you see, when you're at a, an event like this and you see the main stage and there's a lot of very high level messaging about you know, how technology is going to affect the world and, and, and we get into some of the product stuff in the keynotes, but I like these conversations because now we're going inside, right? Because this is, a, you've got to have deep tech technology, right? It's not just the microprocessor, it's all the surrounding components, yeah. the other pieces that you guys are, are building in to make this a reality. And Kim, you and I have talked about how the changes we've seen over the last 10, now even 12 years, where everything was designed for spinning disk, and, and, and now you guys have worked together for years and years and years, and that completely changes the game. We've been looking forward to this era for a long, long time. Can, can you take us Sort of through that progression and how it's manifested itself in these products. Do you want to take this? You want me sure. to talk to it? I mean, when you look at the full portfolio of products, even the ones that were launched, yeah. you know, around the XC9680 this yeah. past week, um, the performance within those incorporates the PowerEdge RAID controller. So it's, it's appropriate that you talk about digging into under the covers, right? Because under the covers of every PowerEdge system is the capability to integrate this, this Broadcom controller, this PowerEdge RAID controller. And as a consequence, even for workloads like AI, these exciting new workloads, people almost take it for granted that these controllers exist and the performance that's associated with them, but they enable the rest of the architecture, even things like uh, I.O. against the, the disk, right? Um, critical elements within the server drive performance. So if you look at drive types have been changing over time, we look at the integration of accelerators, and the, uh, the adaptation of these RAID controllers to get even faster. Um, and, the, and the partnership that we have with Broadcom has really enabled that. What have been the enablers underneath? Is, is, I mean, we and I have, again, talked about the balance, but, but take us inside, what are the sort of fundamental principles, the, the design pillars, if you will, what, what are the key aspects that we need to know about? From a performance standpoint, we actually had three different kind of pillars, and one of them was what we call the happy path IO. So that's your bandwidth, that's your IOPS, that's when everything's going good. The other thing is we looked at latency, and that's really important for a lot of different things like logging and telemetry and things, things such as that, that are really important to keep that latency super low. We're talking about sub 10 microsecond latencies. Um, and then the third thing is something called performance under rebuild. And, and what that is is we're trying to hide when there is something that does go wrong, when a drive fails, and you have to undergo a rebuild. And we've actually been able to, in many cases, completely hide that from the end user in terms of both latency and performance. So when, when systems were designed for spinning disk, it was always you know, that right performance that would kill you. Is, 
how has that changed with Flash and MV, NVMe? Is it, is it the same, it's just faster, or is the, has the bottleneck shifted? Help us understand some of the architectural constraints. So, so I've been doing this now for 24 years, and when I first started out, I remember that you know, hard disk, they could do maybe 100 IOs per second, maybe 200 if you had a really fast one and you really pushed it hard. <laughs> and there was this one day where I had this epiphany, and we were playing around with, remember the, when they first came out, these little USB disks? We were laughing about, if we plugged a bunch of these things in, because they were built on flash, we would have this really fast performance, and then we went, uh-oh, now the game has completely changed. So before, the drives were really slow, now the drives are so fast, and there became a moment in time where we really had to go back and say, how do we redesign these? And what we did was, NVMe right now is our design leader. We went out, we looked at what NVMe drives are capable of, we went out, we asked our customers, we said, hey, what kind of performance do you need? What kind of applications are you doing? So we didn't do this in the ether. None of this was designed you know, just in our own little white room. We talked to customers. And you know, one of the big concerns about customers uh, that they have these days is they said, you know, look, our capacity of these drives are going so fast. They are increasing at rates we've never seen. We're looking. I mean, they're at, up up to yeah. 15 terabytes now. Right yeah. now, and right on the NVMe on the on the flash. Absolutely, so and even up to 40 terabytes. Yeah, very very future. large. Um, you know, coming in the next 12 months. And what's happening is that the performance of these drives is not increasing at the same rate that the capacity is. So you end up with this little bit of a gap, um, and that's where our performance under rebuild comes in, into play here is because a drive cannot rebuild itself any faster than it can write to itself. So that performance of that drive is a key indicator of how fast you can rebuild, and that's what our customers are saying, hey look, I'm really concerned, what can we do about this? Give us a reference point as to what a rebuild time in in, in the, say a hard disk configuration would be compared to where you guys are at today. Is it, can you make a comparison? I mean, it, it, I, I, I've seen rebuild times of hard disk to take, I, I don't know, weeks, you know? It's, it's 97 times. So if you, if you look at 97 times faster with the Perk 12 than previous generation. I mean, usually, you know how it works. Generation on generation improvements, you see 20 to 30% of a performance mm -hmm. improvement. Yeah. Not 97 times the performance improvement. And it, the, the key thing is that, look, none of us want drives to fail, right? But ever since the days of spinning disk, drives do fail, mm -hmm. and you need to plan for that redundancy. That's why we have RAID in the first place, right? Um, but if you're able to plan for not just the, the rebuild times of being 5.5 times faster, That's right. but then while under load, you can have 97 times better performance of your application, it means that the, the net net of that result is that the end user doesn't see a performance impact while that drive has failed and you're having to replace it and rebuild. Historically, before oh, yeah. Perk, Perk 12, you know, drive would fail, you'd send off for a replacement from Dell, we'd send one to you directly within a four hour SLA, depending on your service contract, you replace it and then you rebuild for however long that might take based on the size of the drive. Which could be weeks or Depending on the yeah. size of the drive, it's, it, or, or the full RAID set, maybe. Yeah, yeah. A single drive wouldn't necessarily be no, weeks, but, but right. if you were to, do, if you were to re rebuild the entire RAID set, it could be quite, quite substantial. Yeah. Seamus, you had me at 97x performance improvement. Yeah, two orders so, of magnitude. I mean, right. right? <laughs> the customer feedback must be pretty amazing. Share some of that with us. Yeah, absolutely. This past week, during uh, Dell Technologies World, the feedback from customers has been, look, not only are we seeing this performance impact in 16G across CPU, memory frameworks, DDR5, as well as PCIe Gen 5, but we're able, Gen 4 devices, but we're able to see that within the drive types that are associated. And these RAID controllers enable that performance improvement across the entire ecosystem of, it, of the server. So it's a really exciting use case. They're seeing it for things like healthcare, right? Uh, government applications, yep. as well as financial and, and uh, fi FinTech types of customers. So those uh, high frequency, low latency applications where they're doing things like database or queries that might have a, a real impact on their business. Is there, a, is there an application for this product for spinning disk still? Are they, oh, uh, still, are they still relevant? And, absolutely. And what's the delta impact there? 
Um, so, so we definitely designed it with hard disks in mind as well because you know, in, in terms of cost per gigabyte, you really can't be spinning media still. So it's really great for a little bit more colder kind of data, but we still are there to protect it to make sure that it's still highly available. Uh, in terms of performance, we can still 100% enable hard drive performance, and not only that, but we can accelerate the right performance of hard drives by up to, we've seen two and three X just by doing some optimizations and the right caching algorithms that we have on our controllers. You, that you, that ahead, being James. said though, the cost of flash has come down dramatically I was going to ask in you, the past 12 months. I was going to ask you, because I mean, we've been, we, we certainly correctly called the crossover between, you know, it's an oxymoron, but high spin speed, you know, high performance yeah. disks and, and flash, that was clear. We thought it was going to happen sooner, and, and we, our, our, our premise was it doesn't have to even cross over, because yeah. you get so much other advantages with, so many other advantages with flash things like data sharing and you know, space efficient snapshots, on and on. But to your point, Seamus, is are we, are we almost there where that crossover is? We're getting there, we're definitely getting there. And we're seeing that customers, because of the performance improvements and the, and the price per gig of that flash optimization uh, and the capability of this, this PERC 12 to be able to do hardware-based RAID from the RAID controller on those flash drives. Mm -hmm. That's something that historically customers might not have adopted. They might have thought, oh, I'll do a direct attach on an NVMe drive and not have the benefit of RAID redundancy and run the risk for their applications. Whereas with this, we're enabling, we're making sure that they get peak performance, they're able to, to take full advantage of those NVMe drives, and they're able to deploy it across their full estate within their environment. Seamus, can you expand on, you mentioned healthcare, but some of the industries that are really primed to be significantly impacted by the yeah. power and the performance of this technology? If you look at the applications that this is most appropriately, appropriately used for, right? Things like SQL, right? Mm -hmm. Things like databases, uh, CRM, ERPs. I mean, those apply across a multitude of, of industries. Within healthcare, specifically, it's critical data right, absolutely critical data. It needs to be accessed without lag. I mean, just imagine if you went to the doctor and they couldn't bring up your file because, oh, I can't query off the database quick enough, right? I mean, that's an impact, a direct impact for a user. And uh, when we look at the rest of the use cases, I mean, FinTech, you know, those are high frequency traders. Um, oftentimes, they're, they're not necessarily using accelerators. They're actually using larger disk profiles and, and more of them. So that makes this rate controller even more important. You know, and one interesting thing he's talking about transactional performance yeah. is that this new generation, we're seeing an eight to 10 X improvement over our previous generation yeah. for those kind of applications. So transactional performance is extremely important for a lot of different applications in different environments. And from an end user, how many times have you been on the phone with a call center and you've heard, oh my system's really slow today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. because. Yeah, they're doing reads. They're trying to read a record, right? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah, that that happens exactly all it. the time, and they're trained now to, to blame the system, right? Yes, so, they are, yeah, absolutely. And so. so, and latency, again, latency is just, is become so important. And one of the things that we've been able to do is we actually have these caching engines, they're hardware engines that handle all of the right caching. So as these IO, right IOs come into our controller, we're able to write those down at between five and 10 microseconds, um, and then write those out optimally at a later time and date, or even just kind of re resort them. And so, you know, with these rate latencies, we're even lower than the, the best enterprise NVMe drives. We can beat that, and we can make it, you know, consistent. So for those SLAs that he was talking about, it's really critical, you know, um, for messaging and, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, logging and things like that, yeah. where you have to maintain these consistent. You can't have these 99.99 .99 tail latencies that are 10 and 20 seconds, um, which we had seen, you know, kind of in some of the previous generations, we're like, well, you know, why are we having these, these latencies? And so we've been able to take care of that. We can assure up to 99.99% latency, wow. up to the max IOPS, uh, less than 10 microseconds sub now. 10 mics, sub wow. 10 so mics, yes. So the knee of the yes. curve is not going to... Unbelievable. Well, that, that is, people want consistent performance. Yes. You know, th that they can deal with that as long as it's within some kind of boundary, yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, what, in our final minute or so here, so tremendous amount of innovation, improvement, a lot of benefits, and, and worldwide 
worldly applications as you talked about, Seamus. Absolutely. What's next for Dell and Broadcom? I'd love to get both of your perspectives oh, on that. Oh, there's a lot. Let's <laughs> put it that way. There's, there's a, a lot. lot going on under the <laughs> covers. Uh, we, you know, we can we can talk about roadmaps in customer sessions, um, but you know, there's there's a lot of innovation happening with Dell and Broadcom. Everything from NICs right through to silicon on the board, right through to the, the new rate controllers. I mean, we're doing planning on future generations. We have strong partnership for a, a, the longevity of, uh, of Broadcom. And the other thing that I didn't I did want to mention quickly is that you know within government applications, the, the use of a hardware root of trust, it meant that you know, all the component parts within the server are able to validate and, and certify through the RAID controller so that the devices, if they're tampered with, uh, can ensure that they can be a stable platform. And if there's anything that's manipulated or changed from factory right through to customer deployment, it won't even boot the system. So it's an it's a, it's a additional security feature that's embedded into the RAID controller. And that's a key critical element for the rest of the, of the pieces within the server. For every, and every industry will benefit. Every industry, every especially industry. Fed, especially government right, deployments. Right. Kim, where can the audience go to learn more? So you can go onto the Broadcom website right now, so uh, broadcom.com, and then you can go into the NVMe SSD uh, section of that, and there's all kinds of information. And of course, Dell also has some dedicated reports. We have the Tolly report where we tested over 60 different data points, and so customers can kind of look and say, you know, in my application, what, it, what kind of performance can I expect? Excellent. Seamus. Kim, thank you so much for coming on here, sharing the innovations that Dell and Broadcom are continuing to deliver that, that are making global impact. We appreciate your insights. Thank you so Good much. Work, thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. After a short break, Dave and I are going to be joined by two CUBE alumni talking about what's driving storage in 2023. We're going to be talking about cyber threats and how Dell is helping customers overcome a lot of challenges and more on PowerStore. We'll see you after a short break. Cool.